<laughs> Hi everyone, thanks for stopping by. This is Tony from Sax Studios and today I've got another quick tutorial for you on how to generate a starry sky. And as you can see I have a picture here of Vegas, lots of the casinos, the bright lights. Uh, if you take a picture like this, as this is, this hasn't been altered, you'll see there's no stars and you can't see the stars because of all the lights and it doesn't make for a great picture. It's it's All the lights are very pretty but we can do some stuff to this picture to make it look amazing. So to jump right in, um, I would recommend um, whatever picture you're using. I've got it here. My picture is Vegas. Um, I've double clicked on it to unlock it. Um, since I've already unlocked it, you'll get the layer style and everything. But uh, once you unlock it, uh, the little lock will be gone. Okay, and then what we're going to want to do is come down here and add a new layer right above that. Now, I'll double click on the name and we're going to call this layer Stars. Go ahead and hit enter. Alright, and so now we have our Stars layer. Um, so now we're going to need to fill that layer. Uh, with complete black um, and the easiest way to do that is just to come over here and select black make sure your stars layer is selected grab the bucket tool it's if you don't see it it's part of the gradient menu so choose the paint bucket tool just go ahead and fill that in black don't worry if everything goes away that's normal now we're, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to apply a filter to this so we're going to go to filter and we're going to go down to noise and we're going to add noise. Now for this particular picture you may need to adjust yours. Uh, this is about 1600 by 1200 so you know, you know you may need to go up or down. I prefer Gaussian monochromatic and about 120 roughly. Play with it, see what you like. Um, you'll get different results but for about this size, this is about right, what we want. Let's go ahead and choose OK. And so now we have our stars layer that has a lot of static, like an old TV set that you can't see anything on. But that's OK because we're going to keep moving. Now we're going to need to go back to the filter, OK? And we're going to need to add a Gaussian blur. Not too much. Um, something like point. 0 0.3, 0 0.4, or something to that effect. Just want to blur it just a little bit. So I'm going to leave it at 3 and click OK. Once we've done that, it will blur. And we're going to go ahead and click the little eyeball here to hide the layer. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and select our original city layer. All right. Now, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to select the area we want the stars to be in because obviously we don't want to have stars all over this area and using a clipping mask won't work and so the easiest way to actually do this in CS4 and CS5 especially is just to come up here and grab our quick selection tool and we just want to just want to grab you know seeing it as you see it come down because that's where the colors start to blur but that's not a problem because it's grabbed the whole top area so we're just going to hold alt and we're just going to gently back this out where it's a little bit better we we want it to meet right about where the skyline is and it doesn't have to be perfect especially in big pictures but you know if you wanted to see you were creating a postcard or or something that you wanted to show off or send to someone. So you just take a little time. Hold it. Remember, holding the Alt key, you'll see the little minus sign. That means it's taking away from that particular area. Okay, so now we've got our area selected that we want. And that's going to be very helpful. So now that we do have our, our layer selected as we were going to. We're going to go ahead and turn our stars layer back on. And I know that looks weird, um, 
But what we're going to do now is add a mask to that. So let's click on our stars layer. And let's come down here and we're going to add a mask. All right. And as you can see, we get back our city area. And the top area has the mask on it. And it might look a little odd now. But we're going to do some work on it to make it look a whole lot better. So at this point, I would recommend we go ahead and use a layer adjustment for some levels, okay? So we're going to go ahead and control click the mask, okay? So it selects just the mask, and we're going to come down here, and we're going to go to levels. All right. All right, if you see this little icon here, calculate more accurate histogram, you can choose to leave it or take it away. It depends. Um, for me, I'm going to go ahead and leave it uh, because it does work pretty well. Um, so we want to play with the levels here, and obviously we want to get rid of a lot of the white so we can start seeing our stars. Now... A good level to start at would be something like, for the first one, 214. Uh, we'll leave the, the midtones alone and then say like 232 for the highlights. So, already you can start to see we've got some really nice stars. Um, I think that looks very good. So, that's pretty I mean that's I mean you could end it right there if you wanted to but we can go a step further into making our particular starry knot and we want it to make it look as good as we can so like I said you can play with these you can make adjustments you can take it away you can bring it back more stars I prefer something a little believable you know uh, just play with it. It's whatever you like. You know how much you want. Since it's a far away shot, we're going to get a lot more of the night sky. We see what we want there. And now that we've actually got the levels done, we're just going to want to go ahead and merge this with our stars layer. So let's go ahead and hold control, click stars. Now that both are selected, we're just going to right click merge layers. Okay, now let's change the blend mode. We're going to actually change it to screen. Okay, and when you do, did you see a lot of the detail in the background come back? But we still have our nice stars as we intended to begin with. Okay, now um, what I like to do is I add a little bit of color. Uh, and I know that sounds weird, but if you look up at the night sky, a lot of times it's not just black and white. There are um, often stars that you can see that have color. So, again, let's control click our layer with our stars. Okay. We're going to come down here, and this time it's going to be hue and saturation. We're going to click colorize. Okay. Now, you can play around with this again. Like I said, I'm going to go with something like. 220 and 10. It doesn't make a huge difference, but there is a subtle difference. And the higher resolution pictures that you use, the greater detail they'll be. Um, and so I think that actually looks pretty good. Um, from there, there's really nothing left to do. Um, you've got your starry sky. Now, so if you wanted to, say, turn it into a postcard, you could. Um, all you have to do is, say, change your color to white, grab your rectangular tool, and we, we're going to make sure we've got shape layers selected. We've got white. Make sure we have white selected. Okay. So, we're going to go ahead and just go right over the top there. All right. And as you see, it filled in. Don't worry. Uh, it's not a mistake. We're going to go ahead and rasterize the layer. Okay, then we're going to change colors and we're going to fill that with white. Um, now, I would recommend grabbing the rectangular marquee tool. And uh, this is just kind of a guesswork. You can measure it out if you like with the ruler, but I don't see a whole lot of reason to do that. So, 
I'll kind of guess where I want my border to be, okay? Now that I've selected that, I'll go up here to Edit and Cut. And as you can see, we have a border. Uh, it's not 100% straight, but we can select the Move tool, make sure our shape is selected here, and use our arrow keys up and down, left and right, adjust it however we want it. We want to make sure it's perfectly straight. As you can see, we can move it back and forth. All right. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, if you wanted to, you could even in you know add text. If you, like I said, if you were making it a postcard or something, greetings from Vegas, or anything like that, it's yours to play with. Take it away. Do what you want to do with it because that's what it's all about. Learning practical ways to do things that you could add to things later with. Um, you know, it's not just this that you can use the starry method for. It, you could be doing anything. You could be creating your own work from scratch, uh, space scene, um, you know, something similar to Star Trek, Star Wars. You need this ambient starry area very easy to make. And so I'm sorry this ran a little longer than I meant it to, but I really wanted to take it slow so everybody follows along and understands. And if you have any questions, throw them in the comments. I'll be glad to answer as much as I can. Uh, if you have any requests, throw them in too. You can check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash psychstudios or on Twitter at psych underscore studios. So thanks for stopping by and checking us out and have a good one.